Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to the organizer for inviting me. Uh, uh, I've prepared a few slides. Uh, the first one uh, rapidly to introduce me because I, uh, I did a lot of things in my life, uh, but, but basically I am a, a psychoanalyst and uh, I run uh, a center uh, a private uh, independent research center in Rome devoted to uh, ethics and policy implications of uh, emerging and new technologies. And we are uh, uh, devoting most of our research efforts in the last years to surveillance technologies and biometrics in particular. Uh, now, of course, I, I'm also the winner of the Big Brother Award uh, in uh, 2007, I think, because, because they, they didn't understand my speech in French, but my French was old. It's even worse than my English. So, <laughs> so they gave me the Big Brother Award, but I'm very proud of this. Uh, I, I, I've been uh, the coordinator uh, and the coordinator of three uh, research projects funded by the European Commission on Biometrics. The first one was uh, BITE, Biometric Identification Technology Ethics. The second one, HIDE, Homeland Security uh, and uh, Biometrics uh, uh, Technology Ethics. And the last one, RISE, Rising International awareness on uh, ethics of biometrics and surveillance technologies. So acronyms and names of projects uh, are, are something immaterial. But uh, the point is that these three projects uh, have, uh, are part of the general strategy. But it was the, the, the explorative project, the project which set the debate, the discussion, a sort of uh, fact-finding project uh, is, has been followed by Hyde, which started one year ago and uh, is a three-year project uh, involving 11 centers all around Europe, uh, including two centers, ex-European centers, one uh, in U.S., uh, the Asting Center, uh, and uh, one uh, in Asia, uh, the uh, Singapore University. RISE uh, and HIDE is focusing on technology. RISE uh, is going to start next February and uh, uh, is another large project involved, uh, involving 10 partners, including partners from China, from India, from US again. And uh, 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 RISE is more focusing uh, on uh, policy, international policy issues. What, what is the, 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 the final goal of, of all this project? Uh, also paying my people in my center, of course. <laughs> but there is something more than paying my people, and is uh, to set up in 2010, the end, by the end of 2010, an international platform, which uh, is uh, a, 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 a an international think tank, an international initiative, which can network all people who are uh, involved, who are affected by the issue of ethics and policy implications of surveillance technologies, basically, chiefly biometrics, but not only biometrics. And this international platform should be a, a, a place where uh, a serious of, of big issues, which are often uh, at the center of the political debate, can be debated by scholars, by people who are not in the first line in the political arena, and it means that they, they can probably find easier solution than politicians. This is the experience we had. We organized in Washington, in, first in Brussels, then in Washington, D.C., in 2004 and 2005, in the middle of the crisis of passenger name records uh, data. Maybe you, are, you know what, what happened that the European uh, Union blocked uh, transfer of data uh, from U EU to U.S. Uh, for data protection reasons. In, in the middle of that crisis, we organized two large, two large, two 
conference uh, around 100 people in Brussels, 100 people in Washington, D.C., uh, including officers from the, the Department of Homeland Security Privacy Office, from uh, uh, the Directorate of Justice, Liberty and Security from the European Commission, that is the person wh who were fighting in that moment. We put all these thing, people together in the same meeting hall, together with uh, uh, distinguished historian, philosopher, theologian, discussing what is identity completely far from the political debate. But this was the key. This was the way in which those people, those policymakers, started discussing. And I am proud of this. And this is the strategy we are going to follow. And the first nucleus of this international platform is this one. is a, a, a network, an international network, that for now it is part of the International Association of Bioethics. The name is EAST. I love acronym, as you can see. The acronym is Ethical Aspect of Security and Surveillance Technologies. And uh, uh, these should become, uh, in the future, the, the real international initiative. But let me know, uh, let, me, let me speak now of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the subject of my short, of my brief presentation. Ethical aspect of biometrics. It implies uh, two, uh, two notions. First, that it makes sense to speak of biometrics. And then that it makes sense speaking of ethical implications. It is not so obvious that it makes sense speaking, speak of uh, uh, ethics of biometrics. Because biometrics is not one technology. There are several technologies, several different biometrics. So we should assume that there is uh, somehow behind all the technologies one technology. And the second point that uh, this technology has some ethical aspect per se not in his application, in its application. Of course, if I use biometrics to discriminate against people, there is an ethical problem. But I can use everything to discriminate against people. So it, does, it doesn't mean means that, 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 that biometrics pose an ethical problem. Hmm? So we have to assume that there are ethical implications per se. Uh, let's try to to see, uh, words by words, what, uh, uh, what we can uh, understand about this technology, biometrics. So measuring, biometrics means um, to measure the body. Uh, measure the body per se is not a problem. Huh? It's not an ethical problem. We have done this uh, for centuries, for thousands, thousand years. Uh, there are countless kind of misuration, we can measure emission, infrared. We can measure another kind of emission, sounds. We emit sounds, voice, but also the sound we, we, provo we, we produce when we move. Matter, excretion, hairs. We can measure the way in which we absorb radiation. X-rays, but X-rays, you see, there are traditional X-rays, but there is also the, 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 the new technology with uh, uh, different uh, uh, intensity radiation of, uh, of X-ray, which has this uh, body scanner, wall body scanner, which is in the limelight uh, of the, 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 the political debate in, this, in these days, because the European Parliament has banned for three months uh, this technology from the Skillpool uh, airport. Uh, MRI, we can uh, even, even visual uh, measurement uh, is actually a reflection of radiation. We are measuring with our eyes the, the intensity of reflection. We can measure any, any kind of things we can measure. We can use gravity, weight, mass. We are, measure, we are measuring, in such a case, the intensity of gravity. So, and body measuring 
is performed basically for two reasons, or for one reason that can be divided in two. The reason is to categorize people. One important way, one important reason for categorizing people is uh, to ascribe them to normal and abnormal, pathological and normal group. This is medicine. When you measure a person for medical purposes, you are trying to decide if he, if he is health or healthy or uh, with any, any kind of disease. And you are categorizing him. But you can do the same for ascribing people to certain categories for different reasons, job, sport, study of population, and so on. What happened with the modern biometrics? These measures are digitalized. And the fact that biometrics, current biometrics, is a digital technology changes everything. Because it means that the storage capacity is increasing enormously, and data processing is completely different from analogic representation. One of the most important consequences, and it's very important from an ethical point of view as well, you can see, is that the fact that digital <coughs> representation allow to make probabilistic recognition with analogical representation. We can't use a probabilistic reason. Two icons, two images are similar, or they differ from something reason, but we give a overall, we have an overall decision about similarity. With digital representation, we can confront, compare to different series of digits and decide threshold of match. <laughs> then this is, there is the issue of human recognition. We usually think of recognition is uh, a, 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 according to a very easy model, which is uh, there is an active subject which recognizes a passive subject. This is not the reality of human life. No human being recognizes other human beings in such a way. Not even a corpse is a, a passive subject. We continuously speak and emit signals. And there is a an ongoing conversation during recognition. We use uh, any sensorial modality to recognize other people. And we transmit information about ourselves to others using a lot of modalities. Most of these modalities are unconscious are what they call bodily language. And we inform other people about the categories, the groups to which we belong, continuously through this body language. We also give information, give details about our individual identity without being aware through our body. So the part, the communication part in which we consciously communicate our identity is very small. The larger part of recognition is completely under the level of conscience. So this was, this is the, the preliminary discussion. Let's go now. Uh, the three main topics in which biometrics can be considered a unique, a sole technology with some specific, peculiar ethical implication. Identity, privacy right, and surveillance. Identity. 
let's summarize the way in which human beings usually recognize other human beings. We use sets. We don't recognize a person like him. We recognize a person crossing different sets. Huh? In this hall, there is a, a human male alive, a lot of human male alive, luckily. One of them is Italian, middle-aged, bald and fat. <laughs> no doubt who is. Is in this conference hall now? Is Emilio Moldini. This is the way in which we recognize people. Huh? Our mind works in such a way. Biometrics try to do this work completely differently. Uh, biometrics try to identify, to find the identifier, not to using this uh, uh, set crossing, but to find the identifier. Of course, doing this, uh, biometrics, uh, is a technology which try to abstract, extract the identifier from the biographical identities. Huh? When I hear I use biography to identify a person, when I'm here, I don't use, I try don't, not to use any more biography, but to find an identifier for Emilio Mordini. Is this bad or good? It depends. From a certain point of view, it is uh, ethically uh, laudable, because biography means risk of discrimination. Huh? Biography means uh, Obviously, biography implies a lot of political and ethical, uh, the risk of a lot of political and ethical pitfalls. But of course, biography is our richness as well. So the risk is that biometrics, uh, this is the argument of an Italian philosopher, it, uh, Giorgio Gamben, biometrics can turn uh, humans into pure life nude, naked life, erasing biography, history from our body. And this is, you can, this, 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 this perspective is well echoed by the document of the French uh, Consultative Ethics Committee, uh, the opinion on uh, biometrics, and they say exactly the same, that biometrics run the risk to, uh, to offend human dignity by turning human rich biographical life into a pure, naked, biological life. And to be sure, erasing name, a substituting name with codes has been always a way in which uh, people have been humiliated. But, there is always a but, and this but is very important. Peter mentioned this point, it's an important point. Biometrics is also the way in which millions of people in the global world can have an identity, a certain identity. And a certain identity means to have rights. There is no right that can be enforced without people with identities. Anonymous people cannot have right. They can't claim anything if you are anonymous. You can't claim anything. And in UNICEF, this is the last figures of UNICEF, 41% birth worldwide, 50 million baby each year without birth registration, without certain identity, mostly in Asia, but not also in Asia, 2% in industrialized countries, and with 23% in some European areas. So biometrics can give to all these people the possibility to have an identity because it is clear that their state is not able to provide them with a certain identity. But it is, there is more, even a more challenging point. Biometrics can give the possibility for the first time, 
from the Westphalian, from, from the, the birth of the nation states, can give for the first time the possibility to set up a name system which is free from the power of the state, from the tyranny of the state. For the first time in, in the history, we can free ourselves from the necessity of a birth certificate, of a state, Italian state, Ireland or UK, eh, which certifies that I'm Emilio Mordini and uh, he is Peter Hannan. No, no, mean, no need that there is a state that certifies this. It is enough my body and a small company producing biometric devices. Nothing else. It is necessary. No more birth certificates, no more bureaucrats. Again, one could argue that this is a tragedy, huh? <laughs> because we need bureaucratic states. We need Leviathan, because the Leviathan is also the welfare state, and we need welfare state. And of course, I don't want to, to, to go into this discussion, but I want just to enlighten that biometrics has this great, give us these great uh, challenges. I don't know if it is for the good or for the bad. I don't want to discuss here if it is for the good or for the bad. So, research point for the future. Ethics of identity management in the global world, the right to identity, identity empowerment, identity and liberty. Let's move rapidly to privacy, privacy right. Uh, I don't, I, I, I'm, I won't devote too much time other people will, will discuss this point, but biometrics, I want just to, to show you the two areas in which biometrics is interesting for, for privacy, is that biometrics can be used for data security, securitization, but, uh, and, but biometrics can be uh, conceptualized as personal data as well. As far as uh, uh, protecting privacy, biometrics can be a very effective instrument to protect data bank, access to data bank. Mm, here the big problem is the problem of the unique identifier, the digital cage from what no one could ever escape. Probably there are some technical <coughs> solutions from this, for this, but we can discuss now this point. Let me just uh, uh, to quote the problem that I feel more challenging. The point that if biometrics data are personal data, the current European wisdom is that they are. No discussion. There are several documents in which they are defined as personal data. But I, I would like to devote more debate to this because uh, uh, there is a confusion between biometrics feature and biometrics template, which is the difference between uh, the, the, the physical uh, feature and uh, the digital representation of that feature, which is not exactly the same, and I would like, I repeat, to deserve more debate on this. But of course, uh, biometrics is posing serious challenges to privacy, at least because people are not expected to reason in terms of modern biometrics. Uh, and this is the, the research point, biometrics as a privacy enhancing technology, the status of biometrics data, biometrics data sharing, biometrics and medical data. Most biometrics can reveal medical information. And even, usually people from technology or from industry say, okay, but there are more effective instruments, so there is no sense. So it makes no sense. Uh, don't worry that no one is so stupid to use biometrics to infer medical uh, details. But, uh, my, my, my general uh, uh, perspective is when a technology can be misused, it will be. So uh, if uh, biometrics can be misused to infer uh, covertly uh, medical information, it will be used for this taking as granted. Sooner or later will be used for this. So the problem is to involve medical doctor in the technology design. This is very important. Medical doctor to, to understand what details should not be investigated by biometrics to avoid to uh, infer too, ma too many medical uh, data. 
Let's move to the, to the last point, uh, traditional uh, biometrics and surveillance. Uh, I mentioned uh, twice at least uh, modern, current, new biometrics. We are uh, usually focusing and discussing traditional biometrics, like fingerprint or uh, iris scan, which is actually the, the problem we are facing now. But this is the past somehow. Trends are different. Uh, today we have uh, biometrics, which is uh, one of uh, uh, the technology for automated identification and data capture. But we have already on the verge of a new wave of biometrics, the emerging biometrics, which are closer to human observation. They use multimodal system, multi-biometrics, and they are embedded in the ambient. Uh, progressively, increasingly, we will not be aware of biometric sensors. Biometric sensors will become part of the ambient in we, in, in where we live. And then the future is cognitive biometrics, which is biometrics able not only to recognize people, but to make a judgment about people, to recognize intention. It is not a science fiction future. Eh? It is a technology already in study for airport, for screening, passenger screening. So multi -bio, this is the new biometrics, multi-biometrics, multimodality, behavioral, electric signal. Uh, for instance, few knows that uh, electrocardiogram and electroencephalogram are very good biometrics that can be used to recognize people. The driver uh, to the, 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 develop, the, develop, the development of new biometrics are various. Uh, an important uh, element is uh, the uh, aliveness detection. Uh, aliveness detection it means always to, uh, to elicit some physiological response in people. So it means to produce X information. What is the implication of this? That biometrics is ending up arriving at the opposite side of its original goal. Originally, I told you, biometrics was to find the specific identifier. But now what is happening is that biometrics is able to detect this, to detect this, to detect this. In practice, biometrics is following the way in which we human recognize other people. But it is creating, this is creating a lot of ethical problems. Because this gives biometrics the power to discriminate against. We have no time, I think, to discuss uh, this issue, how categorization is the basis for discrimination, uh, the concept. The key concept is, uh, here is uh, the concept of pseudo-speciation. Pseudo that is the fact of turning cultural differences into biological differences. This is the way in which the most horrible uh, manslaughter happens turning differences into biological differences. There are no biological differences in the human species. There is only cultural difference. We are cultural beings. We are not biological beings. But the mental trick is to deny it and turn everything into biology. It's, it would be the, the issue of another completely different lecture. So. Research points, soft biometrics, behavioral biometrics, intention detection, biometrics, and profiling. So let me apologize for this rush, uh, like uh, a good pupil who studied the lesson, I had uh, to tell you everything. 
<laughs> so I apologize. But I want uh, uh, just to show you that this is a way of uh, living for me, not only for giving a lecture to you. I want to show you the next year uh, calendar of meetings of Rice and I. It is not only to show you that we are very active people, but to invite you. In particular, uh, there are, uh, I think, two events that can be particularly interesting for you. One is uh, uh, the uh, AID Policy Forum on Bodily Issues uh, that will be held in Brussels in March in collaboration with uh, uh, the European Committee for Standardization. So it is not a pure philosophical reflection, but it is focused on practical application. And we are going to discuss uh, uh, that, that those important issues mentioned by Max and Peter concerning elderly people, people different to be, uh, difficult to be enrolled in biometric system and, uh, and etc. And the other uh, meeting which is particularly relevant to you, I think, is the meeting that we are organizing at the beginning of June, is the, the, the 5th and 6th of June in Prague together with the National Ethical Council Forum, organized uh, regularly during, during the, the EU semester presidency, that is in the Czech Republic in June. And so uh, the, the National Irish uh, uh, Ethical Council is expected to participate. And we are uh, organizing, in collaboration with the, the NEC Forum, uh, the day after the next forum, we are organizing a high meeting on privacy and biometrics. And uh, I, I think that it could make sense probably to discuss with you the way in which uh, uh, your uh, council could uh, uh, discuss his, its document in that, uh, in that meeting. Because uh, for now there are, uh, as far as I know, uh, four or five ethical councils uh, which devoted uh, a specific uh, uh, document on biometrics. And I think that we, we have to, to push uh, and to uh, invite other councils to do the same. And your role is uh, particularly important in such a sense. Thank you. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, happy Christmas, <laughs> given that we are starting the Christmas period with December. Thank you.